Now it's that time of year again where we're likely to be planning our motorcycle trips, whether you're a solo rider or two up rider with kit. Um, this is the Slummit Gobi three tent, three man tent. Now this will be ideal for uh, a pair traveling together uh, with kit if you're sharing the same tent. So two person traveling together with kit, this will be an ideal tent. Uh, and I'm gonna show you the reasons why that is. Um, I've also tried the Inca One and the Cub Two from Slummit, and I'll give you my thoughts on why I think this is great for a two person trip with kit. I'm gonna show you how to set this up, show you inside the tent when it's set up, talk about some, some of the pros and the cons of it. If that's of some interest, keep watching and let's get into it. Now, the reason I love the Slummit tents is because they are a flash frame uh, tent. So a flash frame pitch tent, uh, which means there's uh, very little to do apart from unpack it and, uh, and pitch it. Um, there's no internal rods that you need to be setting up or anything like that. Uh, the flash frame nature of this tent means uh, that uh, when you spread the tent out and you pull it up, uh, all the rods are interconnected. So the rods in the tent are three, uh, eight and a half mil um, carbon fiber rods. So nice and strong and it's really quick setup. So let's unpack it and set this tent up. Pull this tent out. Right, if you've not used a flash frame tent before, this is the, the center part of the tent. So once you've pulled everything out, so unfold the legs. Now when the tent is laid out like it is, stand the centre up, pull it up, and you can start to see as you pull it up, the legs start to open, and then you push this centre piece up, clips into place, lift it up, make sure your legs pop out. That's one's popped out there. Walk around and make sure that all the legs have connected properly and popped out. Really nice. That's the that's the tent pretty much up. Now, what's left for you to do is the peg in the guy ropes and the lower sheet first of all. So let's get that done now. So we'll do the uh, the bottom sheet first. And whilst I'm doing that, let me talk to you about some of the characteristics of this tent. So the ground sheet. The ground sheet inside is a bathtub type style, so um, the ground sheet curves upwards and it's got about six inches uh, to uh, keep it propped up. And that is a 10,000 millimeter hydrostatic head. Now, if you don't know what hydrostatic head is, it's just the level of waterproofness of the tent. And what they do is they take a piece of the ground sheet material and they put it over the top of a, a, a beaker or a tube. And what they do is they then pour water in the top of that tube and they keep pouring the water in at a slow rate until the water starts to break through the material. So if you can imagine a tube with a hole in the top and the bottom, at the bottom of the tube, they take the, a piece of the ground sheet material, attach it to the bottom and then pour water in the top and then they start to put uh, water in. And the, um, obviously the larger the millimeters of water, the more waterproof level that the, um, the tent or the ground sheet has. So the ground sheet is 10,000. The outer fly sheet on this is 4,000 millimeter hydrostatic heads. So let's pin down the, the sheet at the entrance as well. Right, what we have now, we have a pole that goes in the front here and what that does, that props up the entrance through the relevant 
loops here on the fly sheet. A holder for this first one in there. That's it. Make sure that's pinned nicely. And then feed it through and pin up the rest of the pegs onto this. Guy ropes should connect and plug into the mat as well, where the mat is. That's the base of the tent pegged down. Of course, now you would use your guy ropes as well to secure the remainder of the tent. I'm not gonna do that today, but do make sure that you guy rope your tent down as well. You wanna make sure that your tent is appropriately pegged into the ground. We can undo the zip at the front. Look it around. One more thing to do and that is the top here. So you do need to put a cover over the top here and you have this additional sheet. So that just connects to the, the where the, um, the tubes connect to the top of the tent. Right, so that is your top on there as well. But that's the tent pretty much set up. So you can see how quickly it is actually to set this tent up, very, very quick. But please make sure that you guy and peg the tent down correctly. So now that I've set this up, let's have a quick look inside the tent. I'm gonna show you the space inside the tent and why I think the Gobi 3 is good, not only for tall people, but also for two people traveling with kit as well. So nice entrance way. Now nah, then. So one of the main reasons that I like this particular tent is because when I lay down, now I'm a six foot two person. I'm six foot two tall. And I can quite comfortably, I can quite comfortably, that sheet was, that sheet was pegged out lengthways. Plenty of room in here, loads of room for two people to sleep really, really comfortably. I'm six foot two, and you can see I've got plenty of space at the head end. My feet aren't quite touching down at the bottom, but there's plenty of space in here for a six foot two person to lie down. There's, as you can see, plenty of room for two people and your kit as well. And of course, you've got the outdoor area here where you can keep your boots as well uh, as any other bits of stuff that might be muddy or wet but inside really really good so there you have it there's a lot more feature and benefits about this tent on their website i'll put a link in the description down below but i think as a moto traveler some of the important aspects are level of waterproofness 10,000 hydrostatic head for the ground sheet 4,000 for the outer fly sheet how what kind of quantity of people and kits can the tents take for the gobi 3 very very comfortable with two people plus kit as well plenty of space for that so if you're a two-up traveler i'd recommend the gobi 3 do not go for the cub 2 the cub 2 is more beneficial for a solo traveler with kit um, and the inca 1 is uh, if you're traveling very very minimal kit um, and you're not over six foot then that would be a good tent to have packs down really lightly really small obviously the the cub 2 and the gobi 3 pack up a little bit bigger um, and a little bit heavier, uh, but very worthwhile. So the Gobi 3, I, I can't recommend it enough for uh, two-up camping.